I was growing up, I felt very much like um, Francis Dana Gage. I wondered why there were uh, rules in society that uh, kept women in a certain place. And uh, I was a student at Ohio University and in Zanesville, and I loved to study women's history. Uh, when we, I would study uh, the feminists from the 19th century, there were two women, Frances Dana Gage and Matilda Go Jocelyn Gage. And so between both of them, it became quite confusing. But then when I found out that Frances Dana Gage was from McConnellsville, Ohio, that just did it for me. I was so excited to think that such an important feminist from back then was from Morgan County, Ohio, and you know, just down the road from where I live. Um, so I have tried to learn about Frances Dana Gage as in many ways that I could, but there really wasn't a lot of ways to learn about her. Uh, then last year I went to uh, the museum in Marietta and there was a speaker speaking, a, d doing a one woman play about her and that was so exciting. Also a woman from Morgan County uh, shared a book with me that s some ladies had written from Marriott, Marietta College about Frances Dana Gage. So that provided some more information. The one is a children's book and I shared it with uh, some of the historians in Zanesville at the, our historical society because Frances Dana Gage's sister attended the Putnam Female Seminary, which was in Putnam, which has is now absorbed into Zanesville, Ohio, but back then it was also an important stop on the Underground Railroad and it was a very important place for abolitionists, the abolitionist movement. And so no doubt Frances Dana Gage uh, knew many of the abolitionists in Putnam and because Frances's parents were active in the anti-slavery movement and um, on the Underground Railroad, and we assume that the children may have assisted. In fact, this book says they did take food to the uh, escapees when, when the time was right and assisted with that. So Frances was, uh, certainly grew up with her parents hating the slavery that they saw across the river I mean, you don't think about it today, but in West Virginia, which was then Virginia, there was slavery, and uh, it was right there for everyone to see. So the Barker and Dana families were uh, early settlers of Marietta and Belle Pre, and they were actively engaged in the Underground Railroad. Uh, when you come up to Morgan County, we had a woman named Affadilla Deaver who was also very active in Deaver Town in the Underground Railroad. Also in Chester Hill, there were Quakers. It was called Chesterfield at an earlier time, but there were Quakers that uh, also were very active in uh, helping slaves escape up this way. So um, it is said in the books that uh, Matilda helped a uh, barrel maker uh, make a barrel, assisted with that, and her father said, what a shame that she's a female because she was so good at it. And at her young age, it probably, uh, just like Elizabeth Cady Stanton, just took her by surprise, and she said that that turned her into a woman's rights person right away when she heard that proclaimed. And she uh, vowed to work for women's rights the rest of her life, and she did. Now, she married uh, James Gage, and they you can find them on the 19th, or 1850 census here in, here in uh, McConnellsville. So Frances was very active in promoting um, anti-slavery sentiment she went in women's rights and also uh, the temperance movement um, 
that women's rights was her first love. And uh, it is said, I have read, that the, most of the people in McConnellsville did not uh, agree with her. Of course, back in 1850, a woman's name was supposed to appear in the paper twice when she was married and when she died. And women really were not supposed to be out in, outside of the home sphere. Now, Frances had eight children, but uh, she managed to be quite active and she attended many uh, women's suffrage conventions, and in fact, she chaired some of them. How we, she had this, but her lawyer, her husband was a lawyer, so she uh, probably learned some meeting skills from him. Uh, Matilda was the woman who uh, insisted that Sojourner Truth be allowed to speak at the Women's Conven Suffrage Convention in Akron, Ohio. And that's the famous Ain't I a Woman speech. However, her, the first version of the speech that was written is probably the more proper one, not the one that Mitil that Francis, excuse me, Francis repeated. So um, she knew all of the suffragists of the 19th century, or most of them, she was good friends with Susan B. Anthony. Uh, friends and Susan B. Anthony came to Zanesville and gave a speech. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. She wrote for Amelia Bloomer's um, suffrage magazine, The L Lily. Uh, she uh, wrote for the um, for magazines, she wrote children's books, she wrote poetry, and this also probably allowed her to make a little extra money for her family. Um, Frances was very proud of her family, and uh, they lived here, and then they moved out to um, Missouri. But when they were there, she that was a slave state, and her sentiments were certainly not appreciated. And her house was set on fire three times. So eventually they left Missouri, and uh, they were also in Illinois, and they came back to Columbus, Ohio, and lived there. But in the meantime, she just was uh, the head of a suffrage convention in Cleveland, and, uh, you know, so that was uh, what her passion was. Then when the Civil War occurred, she went and helped with the Freedmen's Bureau, and that was in Paris Island in South Carolina. There she met Clara Barton, and they became very good friends. And uh, Clara, I think, taught her some of the nursing skills, and. Francis taught her about the women's movement and abolitionism. I think she kind of brought Clara out of her shell. Years later, she helped get a uh, petition for Clara to get money because Clara spent all of her money trying to help people find these war veterans of the Civil War, and no one spent all of her money, and no one she had no recompense from the government for all that she had done. So um, they were good friends. Now, she continued. She knew Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison, and uh, Frederick Douglass came to Sainsville several times. Um, the Putnam Presbyterian Church in Sainsville was one of the places where he spoke. That was a big abolitionist center and uh, she probably visited there quite often. Uh, Henry Beecher was one of the early ministers there and uh, later on another Ohio woman kind of brought him down uh, off of his high horse because he did have an affair with a woman. So the first woman to run for president of the United States, Victoria Woodhall, brought, kind of brought him down. 
And it seems like there was a little bit of maybe bad blood between Harriet Beecher Stowe and um, Frances Dana Gage, but we really don't know. That's just what I read. She when was busy raising her children, but yes, she did write articles and books, so she was apparently making some money. She wrote for an Ohio uh, agricultural magazine, little hints, household hints, and little articles, and people knew her as Aunt Fanny because, especially for the children's things that she wrote. She loved to write poetry, and she must have really had a gift. There's a poem she wrote about how life was going to be a hundred years from when she wrote it, and uh, it's a very interesting poem and quite pertinent to today. A song of the early times out west, and that bold, adventurous band who first set foot upon these shores where now their children stand, who felled the lordly forest tree and built the cabin home, resolved on meeting valiantly all dangers that might come. A strong and hardy race were they to wield the axe and hoe when first they came as pioneers just 60 years ago. It's um, really unfortunate that many uh, women that were involved in the women's movement, you know, have kind of faded into uh, obscurity. And that is the case with Frances Dana Gage. But uh, she worked hard for many years and endured, I can't even imagine, traveling and moving all of these places and re rearing eight children that she could accomplish so much and be so accomplished when uh, we do not know exactly what, how much education she had. We assume she had a pretty good education. My grandmother, Hazel Post Fisher, who was born on the coldest day in Ohio history, just south of Corning, Ohio, uh, February 10th, 1899, uh, happened to turn 21 in the first election where women had the right to vote. Uh, and she tells the story of, of uh, uh, going in on horse and buggy to, to Corning, to the little township house on the hill, a building which still exists, and casting her vote. She added to that story the fact that at the same time she cut her hair short or bobbed her hair as she called it as part of the, the women's movement at that time to gain the right to vote. Uh, it's a treasured family story. My grandma voted in every election, lived to 101 and also had the distinction of living in three centuries from 1899 to 2001.